glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Everybody sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to everyone. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is truly the head of my life and I know the head of your lives as well. Amen. Amen. And I often say I know he's the head of this church as well. Why? Because when two or more gather in his name, he's in the midst. Amen. Amen. And it's more than two it's more than two in this building this morning. Amen. 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 I pray that you all had a great week in the Lord. I know that um, we say every week that there are trials and tribulations, yes, which we cannot escape those things, but we should be at a place in our lives, amen, where those things will not disturb our day, amen? amen. They may buff us, right? But it should not destroy our day, amen? Amen. Amen. Why? Because we say it every Sunday, right? It's, been rep it's reputation now, right? It's habitual now, right? We know we're going to have trials and tribulations, but we know Christ has overcome the world. Amen. We know we have power. We know we are successful. We know we are victorious. Amen. We have the victory. Amen. 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 I was trying to think of something I could share with y'all um, this morning um, that happened in, 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 in my work week, but I can't think of anything. And so much happens from day to day, but my mind is blank right now. So at this time, um, let us rise and let us greet um, each other, one another. And if you're sitting, um, that means, as Reverend Jeff Jones said, you, you don't want to be touched. So just offer a hand wave and uh, let's move on to uh, whoever, you know, wants to be greeted. Amen. Amen.
joy, joy, joy in my father's house. Just something about church. You can't really explain it, but it's just something about church. You know, I can remember as a little kid, uh, Sunday mornings were something different. You wore different clothes. And it seems like when, it, when we got home from church, it just seemed like the food tastes different. <laughs> it was just something about that Sunday dinner, amen? That fried chicken, um, a, 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 a macaroni and cheese, collards, rice. It's just something about Sunday. Then after we ate, it just seemed like the day was a, was a different day. And then come Monday, it was just back to um, regular, um, regular things. But it's something about Sunday. And, and coming to church, it's just something about it. Amen. Amen. I always enjoy coming to church as a kid. And um, just something about it. So there'll be joy in my father's house. Amen. 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 Before we go to our call to worship, uh, let us turn around and greet those who are tuning in this morning on YouTube. We can greet you all also in the name of our Lord and Savior. And I pray today that something will be said, the heard, um, that will change your lives forever. Amen. I believe that God performs miracles. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? I believe that, 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 that something can happen instantly that can change our lives for the rest of our lives. Yes. And for those of us who are pessimistic about that, I'll say continue that, that thought pattern and see what the good Lord does. Because God, I believe, he loves to show himself to us. I really believe that. I believe he enjoys showing us the power that he has. And, and I can testify that there are some things that has happened in my life that has changed my life for the rest of my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us go to our call to worship. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let, Let us come before him with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done great things. Amen. Let us give God a hand clap of praise for the great things that he has done. At this time, we'll uh, pause for our prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you once again for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we thank you for leading, guiding, and keeping us through this week. God, we praise you, God, for waking up waking us up this morning in our right minds. God, when we woke up this morning, God, I believe that it is evident that all of us who are sitting in here this morning, God, we knew exactly what today was. God, we knew exactly where we wanted to be this day. God, we even knew what we were going to wear to church this morning. So God, we just thank you for all that you do. And God, we pray that, 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 that we don't take anything for granted but we will always give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for all that you do in our lives. Oh God, I believe that I am not who I am because of what I've done. God, I believe that we all are who we are because of you, because of your grace, because of your love. And God, one may have a little more than the other. One might be a little more educated than the other. One might, oh, have more gifts than the other. But it does not mean that we're not equal. Oh God, you created us in your image, God. You created us all as human beings, God. And that means, God, that we are all the same, God. But you've given us all different uh, talents. God, you've given us a different assignment. Therefore, God, we have to have different gifts and talents, God, to fulfill the assignment that you have for us on, while we're here in this life. So, God, we just give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, God. We pray, God, that you shine upon this service this morning. And, God, I want to send a special prayer, God, for a friend of mine. God, he lost his wife, God, last Friday, all out of the blue. And, God, he's having such a hard time. Oh, God, he said he doesn't know what to do with his life. He doesn't know what to do, God, from day to day. But, God, I just lift him up this day, God as they're um, having his wife uh, 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 a ceremony this morning. I just pray that you strengthen him, that you wrap your arms around him, that you, God, would just hold on to this brother. Yeah. God, that, 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 that you just give him the strength and the courage, God, to continue, God, to walk on, God, to continue, God, to move forward, God, to continue, God, to wake up from day to day, to rise up out of that bed. 
And God, I know he's not the only one who's going through that. So I pray for all of your people, all of those who are hurting. Oh, God, lift them up. And God, if there is anything that we can do to encourage those who are hurting, I pray that we would not let that, 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 that spirit of selfishness come in, that we would walk by them, but that we would stop, that we would pause. God, that we would lift them up, that we would encourage them, that we would hold them, God, that we would hug them, that we would smile at them, that we would do something to show them that you're there and that you care. So God, we just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. This day we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time we have um, announcements and then we have words from our pastor. Good morning and happy Sunday. As always, we start out just by acknowledging any visitors we may have. So just ask you to raise your hand if you're a visitor. Just want to acknowledge your presence. Thank you. Family or group. Thank you. So we know you, you had other choices this morning. As always, we just want to thank you for choosing uh, to spend some time with us. And we hope we'll do or say something that will be a blessing to you. So uh, if you're in this area again, please, uh, please do come back and see us again. We really... Uh, or appreciate having uh, folks in the house that we can uh, help uh, in some type of way, and we hope we do something to do today that will be a help for you as well. So let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> and we always uh, just remind everyone to continue to help us in our ministry outreach to those on our sick and shut-in list. Yeah, just send the card uh, and make a call, and where appropriate, you can uh, visit. And it is a, a blessing to those on the receiving side. And I have a note here I want to share with you that kind of demonstrates uh, that. It says, Dear uh, Church Family, well, this, mar this month marks a year since I've moved away from the comfort of world victory. I just want to thank you for the, your support in helping me to adjust the care packages, calls, cards, text messages and prayers were much appreciated. I am so proud to still feel the connection to you and I would like to say a special thanks to Mr. Ron Baton for putting a, you on TV each Sunday. <laughs> I wake up uh, early just to see, uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything and I only wish I could be, you could see me grinning and waving <laughs> as, with both hands when you uh, wave out to the camera. So World Victory is such a special place I call it my happy place where I am spiritually fed and lovingly embraced. See you on Sunday. Love, Penny Parker, a.k.a. Dorothy. <laughs> so like I said, it's always, it uh, seems maybe a small thing, but it, is a, it does have a big impact. So we want to thank you for continuing to, to keep up the good work. Do we have any, I don't have any uh, announcements uh, this week. I do, I have one update. I think uh, the trustees that just, we were talking earlier, they said they're still working on the ladies' uh, refurbation of their uh, the restroom. Not complete yet, but it's mostly uh, done, so they're making great progress. And I think we'll probably get an update, and I guess soon, uh, and let us know when it'll be available. So, uh, but uh, just give the trustees a round of applause for doing such great, uh, great job. They've really done a lot this year, seems like outside and then inside the building. So they're on top of things, uh, making sure that we have a, a great place uh, to worship and comfort. Uh, uh, only other uh, note I want to make, I guess Monday for Newport News area, I guess at this area, it starts back the return to school. So we just want to offer a special uh, prayer and uh, thanks to those teachers that are going to be going forward and, uh, and facing a new school year. This is last year was pretty, uh, pretty rough. The, to be in the school system, so as, as most years, is really challenging. So uh, we know that uh, we have a lot of teachers in our uh, former and, and uh, current teachers, so we just want to reach out and just say thank you for the great job you're, you're doing and then offer our prayers uh, for your coming school year, and hopefully uh, you'll be blessed as, uh, as you go forward. So. One last note. Uh, for we, I know we have at least three new members that have joined uh, recently. 
So if you're in the in the if you're able to, we ask you to come uh, physically here Sunday if you can. That way we can have right hand of fellowship, so we can extend that to you if you're in the area. So just put that on your calendar if that's something you can uh, you can do. Uh, that's all I have for announcements. But do do we have any anniversaries to celebrate this morning? Any anniversaries? Any at all? Oh, there's a one hand over here on the right, sir, Reverend uh, Deacon. Uh, Grant, <laughs> how many years? 31 years. 31 years, okay. Oh, Mr. Tiller, your uh, birthday, your uh, anniversary as well? Oh, okay. So for yours is uh, today as well, right? So both of you are actually here for today for your anniversary, so that's outstanding. So any others I missed? Nope. So we have any birthdays to celebrate from last Wednesday to this Thursday? Birthdays? I'm showing uh, Miss Gloria Thomas' birthday. There's a hand. So. <laughs> any others? I don't have any else. Mr. Mr. Augustus Chavis, Jr., his birthday was the 22nd. So. so those are two I know of. We don't have any others. Let's join as we uh, sing happy birthday to our loved ones. Happy birthday to Placemat keeps disappearing. It's a good thing I have my placemat. Deacon, did you get my placemat again? No, I, I'm talking about the official one with the paper clips and everything, the real one, the, the, the teacher's version. Good thing I have it memorized. Good morning. Good morning. I won't be before you long. I do want to share a couple of things. A couple of things. One, the rest of the building was painted. Including the trim outside. Okay, some of y'all who've been saying, when y'all are going to paint the building, I'm not clapping. Like I, like I said last week, don't be in here complaining, asking for stuff. Then when it happens, you do this. I said the rest of the building has been painted. Right, even the trim. But look, I bring that up to say this. We, we do have priorities at World Victory Church and Life Center. There's an order to how we do things, right? The first priority is God's purpose, right? We're going to follow the great commandment and the great commission. That's God's purpose. The second purpose, or not purpose, but um, priority is then people, right? The needs of people. God's purposes always meet the needs of people. The third priority is then programs, whatever programs we have, and then property. So we're doing a lot of work on the property because we have to, but remember, property is not the purpose. Amen? Amen. Because what happens, team uh, saints, if you're not careful, you'll say, well, let's do one more thing to the building. Let's do one more thing. Then we'll invite some people. Let's do one more thing. We're going to make the building safe and comfortable and not distracting, but we're going to make sure we're reaching out to those 164,000 people who live within five miles of World Victory Church and Life Center. Amen? Amen. So never get the, the priorities mixed up. Got to have a nice building, but I'll tell you what, the more people come in, the better the building will look. Because right. every building looks really good when it's full. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody follow me? Yes, sir. Amen. So I want to make sure I share that. We, we work on things in order. We have stuff that we're doing in order. Amen? Because the purpose of World Victory Church and Life Center, as I look at my placemat, is to help people make, meet God through the Lord Jesus Christ who will meet their needs in every age and stage of life. Amen? Amen? All right, so that leads me back to this program. We need to get this grief, widow, widower, grief area program started. I'm still looking for at least two more people to want to lead. I have 14 names of people who want to participate, but you know at World Victory, we're not going to start a ministry without a leader. Amen? That is a recipe for disaster. Hello? Hello. Yeah. 
How many of you know that if anybody, everybody, and somebody does something, nobody does it? We need names. Hello? Now, my promise to anyone who raises their hand is you know I will not leave you out here by yourself. We have tools, we have information, we have processes, we have systems to help you be successful, but someone has to raise their hand. Not in this sanctuary right now, but if that's going to be you, you can fill out that, that card in the back of your pew and let us know. Because ultimately, there are some hurting people in this world. Amen? Amen. And this idea of grief and mental health and mental wellness is real. Amen. Everybody follow me? Yes, so that's my one impassioned plea for today. Uh, right after Reverend Burgess delivers the word, we're going to have a, a little session or word for our teachers and those in the educational system. Students too, amen? amen? So we'll make sure that we do that before we leave. All right, Reverend Burgess, I am done. Come on back. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Well, earlier I said I couldn't think of anything that happened this week. <laughs> but now I can. My, my youngest sister and her family are here this morning. Aww. Yep. Her name, well, we call her Nikki. She's the baby. She's been overthrown by Skyler. She's the baby now. And my brother-in-law, Jermaine, and my nephew, Tyler. They um, drove up from South Carolina, came by the barbershop um, Thursday or Friday, Friday. Yeah, came by the barbershop Friday, and, and let me tell you something funny. So my other barber was, was, was working with me, and um, we cut hair by appointments. So when they pulled up in front of the barbershop, I looked over at my barber, Boris. I said, Boris, are you expecting anybody else? He said, no. I said, do you recognize those people? <laughs> He said, no. I said, man, well, I think you should go out there and tell them that they need a, an appointment to come in and get a haircut. <laughs> sure enough, he walked outside and I just started laughing. <laughs> but it was funny. It was funny. Hey, Amen. So do we have any Deltas in the house? Yeah. She's a Delta. <laughs> yeah. Even though she doesn't tell me anything that I'm, I'm not supposed to know, she's still my sister. And um, she, don't, she doesn't share any information with me, so I don't know the handshakes, the signals. <laughs> I don't even know the colors. Yeah, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> so now let us prepare for our offering. Here at World Victory Church and Life Center, we have one offering, one offering only. We, like I always say, we will not pump and prime you to, to dig deep into your pockets. Amen. Give what you can afford to give. And we've developed multiple ways. We have the containers in the rear of the church. You can go online. Uh, you can give through the Giftify app. You can go to worldvictory.net and give. You can mail in your offering. You can bring your offering in at any given time. We have a secure lockbox um, in front of the church. You can come during the office um, hours. Amen? Amen? Let us bless the offering. Good morning. Good morning. Behold. <laughs> First and foremost, I want to give thanks to God for letting me see in another day and also for me to enjoy this wonderful weekend with my 31-year wife <laughs> because she, she kept me in order when, <laughs> when a lot of times I jump off the boat. <laughs> Let us go before the throne of grace. <clears throat> Most gracious, eternal Father God, we, your children, come before you. Father, we come to give you thanks for all that you have done for us and all that you will do. We have never seen so much glory like the glory of you, that each day you touch our heart and mind and bring us to your place of worship. But Father, most of all, we come because you have given us a blessing that we never understand. And we give that blessing back to you, which is our tithes and offering. We give it to you with an open heart, with freely that we give it with you. Because we know by giving this and our love for and dedication to you, that everything will work out according to your will.
So Father God, touch your children. Bless them. Keep them always in close to your spirit as we keep you close to us. For all this we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, the one true Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, we could never, we could never not give God enough thanks. And I think it's good to make it a habit or a practice to always give thanks for all things. Uh, today we're going to talk about reflections that cause praises. And the song itself uh, kind of speaks to my to my message, um, or to my message, you know, give thanks for what the Lord has done. You know, oftentimes we spend a lot of time um, complaining of, about what we don't have, or we mope and moan about things that doesn't go our way. Um, and those are the times when we should be giving thanks to God for what he has done for us. Amen. Amen. This morning we're going to read from Psalm 124. Psalm 124, 
And I'm going to read from the New Century Version this morning. This is a time when we panic, trying to get to where we need to get to real fast. Amen. I've experienced all of that. I still experience it, believe it or not. Uh, but now, though, thank God to uh, technology, I just pull it, up, pull it up on my app. So it makes me look like I kind of know the Bible a little bit more than, a little better than what I do. Amen. But don't feel embarrassed about anything. Amen. Because this is a big book. The pages are thin. And it can be confusing at times, um, trying to remember one book from the other. That's, that is not a strength of your faith. Amen. That is not a testament to your commitment to God. Just want you to know that. So Psalm 124. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let Israel repeat this. What if the Lord had not been on our side when we were attacked? When they were angry with us, they would have swallowed us alive. They would have been like a flood drowning us. They would have poured over us like a river. They would have swept us away like a mighty stream. Praise the Lord who did not let them chew us up. We escaped like a bird from the hunter's trap. The trap broke and we escaped. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This morning we're gonna talk from the subject of reflections that cause praises. Reflections that cause praises. Now one thing I have discovered in this life is that we are going to always find ourselves in some dilemma. I've heard it said many times by a lot of different people, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And as I think about that statement, I have to embrace it. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I find myself sometimes coming out of a situation while going into a situation. I find myself sometimes being angry about something that did not go my way when it should have and it stresses me out. If it ain't one thing, it's another. And as I reflect over my life, especially as an adult, I can say that this life has a way of weighing a person down. I mean just like itself many times. Uh, let me start over. As I reflect over my life, especially as an adult, I can say that this life has a way of weighing a person down. I mean, just life itself many times can be disappointing. It can be perplexed and very, very stressful. Now, sometimes I wonder why we strive so hard to live. There are so many people who are sick and cannot be healed. There are so many people who are struggling with mental health issues that are affecting their quality of life. There are so many people who are homeless and for whatever reasons, cannot get on their feet. There are so many people who are stressed because of a lack of economic resources that they cannot do anything about. There are so many people who are dealing with loneliness, abandonment, and isolation due to their personality that they are powerless over. There are some people that just cannot get along with people and they're struggling with loneliness. They're struggling with abandonment. There's nothing that they can do about it. There's so many people dealing with so many different issues in this life. And all kinds of these issues we're dealing with, they consume us. But for some reason, we struggle to live. For some reason, we struggle to live. We want to hold on to this life. We're sick in our beds. We're sick in our bodies. We're hurting all over. We have terminal issues, but still yet we're striving to live. And sometimes it makes me wonder why we have such a strong desire to live. And all I can say is that if it ain't one thing, it's another. So when was the last time you found yourself stressed because of some kind of trial or tribulation you were dealing with? Every Sunday we confess that in this world there are going to be trials and tribulations. We're going to have to face World victory has gotten to the place where we can accept that life oftentimes can be somewhat difficult. We say it every Sunday. It's in us. 
We can accept that. We've got to that place where we can accept that. But the thing about it is that as Christians, it's hard to embrace. Even though we say it each and every Sunday, it's still hard to embrace. I accept it, but I can't embrace it. I say it every Sunday. I believe it. It's gotten into my DNA. It's gotten into my psyche. It's gotten into my mind. I can say it, but I cannot accept it. Each and every day. And as Christians, some of us can testify that there are some trials and tribulations that will shake our faith. Some of us can testify that there are some trials and tribulations that will haunt us for the rest of our lives. There are some trials and tribulations that can rob us of our faith. Even though we understand the trials and the tribulations are real and at some time or another we are going to have to face them still, they are difficult to manage. Even though I believe that God deals with everything in my life, I believe that nothing happens in my life, but still during those trials and those tribulations, I cannot manage them. It's difficult. It's hard. I found myself crying to God, why? Why, God? Why? Why me? Why me? Even though, as a Christian, I believe this, but it's still hard to manage. So the question is, as a Christian, as a Bible quoting Christian, as a baptized believer and a Holy Ghost filled Christian, how do you deal with those trials and those tribulations? You believe in the Bible. You put your armor on. You've done all that you have to do. You study. You listen to gospel music. But still, how do you deal with those trials and those tribulations? Doing all that will not exempt you from trials and tribulations. We can read all we want to read. We can quote all the scriptures we want to quote. We're still going to have trials and tribulations. We can do everything right. We cannot smoke. We cannot drink. We cannot listen to R&B music. We cannot cuss. We can treat people right. We can love people. We can give to people. We can do all those things. We can come to church every Sunday. It still would not uh, exempt us from those trials or those tribulations. How do you deal with, for instance, a sudden loss of your spouse? How do you deal with the murder of your child or your child committing suicide because of bullying? How do you deal with the loss of a job that provided your livelihood? How do you deal with an abusive spouse or refuse, one who refused to leave or get help? How do you deal with unruly children? How do you deal with difficult relatives or in-laws? How do you deal with the loss of your home due to a fire? How do you deal with the destruction of a hurricane? How do you deal with the issues of life as a Christian who wholeheartedly believes that your salvation has shielded you from the difficulties of life? All of the things that I've covered, we have dealt with the one, one time or another. There's something in this life as Christians, believers in Christ, that we're having to deal with. How do you deal with it? I can remember at one time, I was naive to the issues in my life as a Christian, living right, believe in the Bible, study the Bible. I'm not supposed to feel what, what, what the so-called worldly people feel. When the worldly people hurt, I'm not supposed to hurt. Why? Because I've got this armor on. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I have faith. If I worry, that meant I had no faith. But I was, I was naive. I was in denial. I was not being real with myself. And so many times if we're not careful, we find ourselves in these churches that, 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 that's telling us or trying to teach us that as Christians, we're supposed to be super people. But we're human beings. We hurt. We have feelings. So how do we deal with these issues? Now, I can remember being in Maine when I got, um, when I got saved. I started going to the um, base chapel, go to Sunday service. Pretty much all we had, I even sung on the choir. Then I left Maine and got stationed um, in Norfolk and lived here in Newport News and started attending um, a church there. And this church was a Pentecostal church and we believe that, that, that your faith will uphold you, for, your faith will hold you regardless of anything. We believe that as long as you're living right, as long as you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, we believe that there's nothing in this life that will affect us. 
That's what we believe. If you were bothered by something, or if you had a stronghold in your life, it was one or two reasons. One, you could be saved but not delivered. See, once you get saved, you got to be delivered. And if, in order to be delivered, you got to receive the Holy Spirit. And the sign of receiving the Holy Spirit, you have to speak in tongues. So if you haven't done that, then you're saved but you're not delivered. And the other thing is that, well, you're not living uh, 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 the life that you're supposed to live. You, you, in other words, you're a hypocrite. So if anything in life affected you, it was because of those two reasons. But after I began to learn a little about the Bible and I began to think that if my relationship with God is what it was supposed to be, then I thought that I could deal with anything in life. I'm not supposed to hurt because of anything. I'm not supposed to render evil for evil. You hit me, I'm not supposed to hit you back. You cuss at me, I'm not supposed to cut, curse back at you. This is what I believe, but I struggle though with that. Why, because if you hit me, I want to hit you back. Why couldn't I hit you back? If you curse at me, why can't I curse you back? If you don't like me, why do I have to like you? I wasn't living the life that I was supposed to live. I was living in chains. I was bonded. I was confined. I was not living the life that I was supposed to live. So I, was dealing, I wasn't dealing with the trials and the tribulations. I was not in a real world. Amen. So I could speak. And, 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 and at that time, you know, I, I, I believe strongly in the Bible. Right. And um, we used to say, you know, uh, you can speak to those um, issues and they'll leave. Right. Speak to those mountains and they be and they be removed. You know, I could call those things that be not as though they were. So if you were a hindrance in my life, I could, I, could, I could push you away with just speaking the word. But none of those things happened. None of those things happened. I still had those issues. I still had those trials. I still had those tribulations. I still suffered. I still struggled. None of those things happened. I quoted all the scriptures in the world that I could quote, but nothing happened. I read the Bible as much as I could. Nothing happened. I pray, I, I, I try to remember to pray every morning and every night, but still my life did not change. Nothing changed. None of those things happened. So today, looking at the text, the psalm is a song of thanksgiving for Israel's deliverance. Now there is a communal psalm, meaning it is a community of people giving thanks to God. And the psalm divisions are verses one through five, naming the dangers avoided. And verses six through eight, praise to God, the deliverer. So what they did was reflect back to God's deliverance and began to praise God for his continued deliverance. So what I should have been doing, I should have been thinking back to when God rescued me or delivered me from one uh, trial of tribulation and giving the praise for that instead of worrying about uh, uh, trying to read the Bible and the scriptures and quote scriptures to try to make those things go away. It's not about making our issues go away. The trials and the tribulations are going to always be here. But it's how do we manage? How do we cope? How do we deal with it? There is no magic pill in this Bible. Just because you're giving your life to Christ, it does not exempt you from life. We're going to have to deal with these things. So how do we manage these things? And I have, and I have three um, ideas that can help us from this text. So as a Christian, how do you deal with those difficult trials and tribulations? Number one, we have to reflect back to the times God delivered us from our past trials and tribulations. And as, and as I read and reread this psalm, I began to see that this was a continued practice. The community made it a habit reflecting over God's deliverance for them, which always led into a praise. See, when we have to do and we have to do the same. So when we reflect daily on the good things of God, how God has kept us from, from trial to trial, from day to day, then when those trials and those new tribulations arise, it does not catch us by, uh, by surprise. And I thought about the Steve Harvey show. I like listening to the uh, prank phone calls. And every morning, well, every Saturday morning, I listen to it. And this guy always gets somebody off guard. 
and they get all upset, irate, and start cussing and carrying on. And then when it's, oh, you just got pranked by so-and-so, and, and, what, and what the family member does or the friend, they would give them a little information about the person. Well, that's how the devil works. The devil feeds into that. He feeds into our minds. He, 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 he'll bring something up about us. Well, you know you wasn't right when you did that. And, 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 and if we're not practicing or praising God and reflecting back on God, then that devil can come and catch us by surprise. And next thing you know, we're so consumed with the trials and the tribulations, when all we have to do to manage the trial and the tribulation is to reflect back on God's deliverance. God has delivered all of us many times from, from something. I don't care if it's a cut on the finger. It could be as small as a cut on the finger, or it could be a, a, a disease that was terminal that God delivered you from. God has delivered us time after time after time after time. So all we have to do, so number one, we have to reflect back to the time God delivered us from our past trials and tribulations. And this is something that we have to make practice. It should be a habitual thing. Every single day, our minds should, should reflect back to something that God has done for us. We still have enough time to watch the football game. We still have enough time to listen to the prank phone calls. We still have enough time to gossip. We still have enough time to do all that we want to do. But there should be some time in our day that we reflect back on God's deliverance. And the second thing is that we should remember that God will always be faithful to in his promises. Now, God promised Israel that he would deliver them from their enemies. Israel understood that God delivered them. They were praising God in this psalm. They reflected back to when God delivered them. And then they began to praise God for his deliverance. So in other words, so what I see in this is that Israel understood that even though we might be in another a trial of tribulation, but we know that God's going to deliver us because God is faithful in his promise. God delivered us yesterday. We're going through today, but God's going to deliver us today. So tomorrow we'll give him that praise for, for today's deliverance. So we got to always remember that God will always be faithful in his promises. And now that promise has, 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 has transferred to us. We believe in Christ. We've given our life to Christ. We, we confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We confess that Jesus died for our sins. We fall right in line with Israel. God is faithful to his promises. So today I may be hurting, but I'm going to praise God for last week getting me through. It was going to help me get through today. And then tomorrow when I face the other trial of tribulation, I'm going to praise God for that again, for the past. So God is always faithful. We have to remember that God is always faithful in his promise. And the last is that our reflection will always cause us to praise God. When we reflect on God and all of God's goodness, we can't help but praise God. I share the story all the time. I just shared the story this week. My wife and I, we're selling our home and um, we're looking for another home. And we found the house that we loved. We found it. I mean, we found it. We even put an offer in. The offer was accepted. But it was contingent upon me selling my house. I haven't sold my house yet. The house that we love, that we put an offer in, someone went and came along and put a contract in. But see, I remember when I was trying to buy the barbershop. And it was a long process. But when I reflect back on that, guess what? I now own my barbershop. So now to help my wife and I, to help us get through this situation, we're going to reflect back on that. And we know that if we did not get this house, we know that there's a better house. There's a house there that we don't even know about. There's something in that house that God's going to give us that we don't even, we can't even imagine we want it. When I bought my building, it was one building I was renting, but two buildings came as one. I did not know that. I, didn't, I, I couldn't ask God for that. I could not ask him for that. So we're going to reflect back on that. We're going to reflect back on how God has blessed us and how God has, 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 has strengthened our family, how God has blessed us financially, uh, uh, and all kinds of things from the past to the present. We have a whole lot to look forward to. Instead of moping and, 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 and complaining about not getting that house, we're going to praise God for the house that he has for us. 
So our reflections will always cause us to praise God. When we share our testimonies, our testimonies turn into a praise because the testimony begins uh, 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 as a sorrow, as a sad story. But in the end, there's good news. And by the time we get to the good news, we're shouting, we're praising God, we're giving God the glory, we're thanking God for what God has done. So how do we deal with the trials and the tribulations in life? How do we manage those things? How do we cope with those things? Number one, we have to reflect back to the times when God delivered us from our past trials and tribulations. Number two, we have to remember that God will always be faithful in his promises. And number three, our reflections will always cause us to praise God. So reflections that causes praise, reflections on God causes praise, reflections on the good news causes praise. Let us not reflect on the issues. Let us not reflect on what somebody did to us. Because as humans, those are the things that's easy for us to, 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 to reflect on. Every time I see so so all I can remember was how they did me wrong. Now I've, I've gone from being happy to now being mad and angry. Lord knows, you know what? I, I can't stand so-and-so. I don't even know why they had to come in here today. Let us not reflect on those things. Let us not uh, 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 operate in our humanity, but let us try to operate in the spiritual. Amen. Amen. And the spiritual is that we will always reflect on the good news. We will always reflect on God. We will always we will always reflect on God's deliverance. The doors of the church are open. You know, this life as a Christian is, is a difficult life to live. It's a hard task because if, if you're not grounded and rooted in your relationship with God, you will allow people to pull to push and pull you in the direction that they want you to go. You'll be like, uh, like the tree in, in the midst of a storm that's swaying from side to side. But if you take the time and find a good church, and the thing I like about this church is I believe it is a good church, you can get a good foundation. We will allow you to have a personal relationship with God we will not determine to you what your relationship should be. But with that relationship, that relationship will help you to stay steadfast in this kind of world. This is a tough world that we're living in. I remember a friend was telling me that when he had gotten saved, uh, he was working at Home Depot, and he was new in the faith, and somebody came up to him. He had an earring in his ear and tattoos on his, on his arm, and this person told him that he was going to hell. And it devastated him. It destroyed him. But he said, later on that day, a lady came up to him and asked him, why were you looking so sad? And she gave him, she gave him some words from the heart, some words of love. And she told him, don't worry about that mess. You just continue to walk in Christ. And that's what we're here to offer, offer to you today. If you haven't given your life to God today, and you're looking and you wanted to give your life to God, you're sick and tired of trying to manage life yourself. Well, we offer you a Christ right now. We offer salvation to you. And all you have to do, I believe this because this is all I had to do. All I had did was open up my arms, symbolize me, open up my heart, and I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. This is what I did. This is what I did. And from that day forward, I was saved. I've given my life to God. A change, an inward change occurred. If you're there today, if you just do that, that's all it takes. If you just do that, and I believe that God will lead you to the right place. I believe that God will lead you to the right place. I believe that the spirit of God that has now come into your heart, your spirit, I believe that spirit will direct you to where you need to be. And if you go somewhere that's not healthy, I believe that the Holy Spirit inside of you at that time, right now, will cause you to be uneasy, will cause you to be at unrest. And that God would lead you. So continue this journey with God from this day forward. Amen. Amen.
I love you forever. Amen. We first want to make sure that we offer, we're going to go into um, our prayer for our teachers and people in the educational system. But first, we want to make sure we give people an opportunity to unite with Christ and to unite with each other. Amen. So this idea of salvation, which Reverend Burgess was talking about throughout his sermon, really gets confusing sometimes. Because man wants to put their own definitions into what it means to be saved. Amen? But the Bible declares in many places that to be saved, that is saved from eternal damnation, to live with God and in his beauty, you simply need to confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord. You simply need to confess that you are a sinner and that God sent Jesus to save your soul. And if you believe that in your heart and say it with your mouth, then you are saved. Everything you hear after that is something man made up to make you work a little bit harder. Amen? Amen. So if you're in this sanctuary today and you want a lasting relationship with God through Jesus Christ, or if you're watching through YouTube, all you need to do is to repeat to yourself and you can whisper it. God, I'm a sinner. And I believe that you sent Jesus Christ to save me from my sins, the ones I committed before, the ones I'm committing now, and the ones I will commit later. Because well, I am not a perfect person, but God, I believe you sent him to save me. And uttering that prayer, you are now saved. Amen? Now after that, there comes some work you have to do. But it's not to be saved. You see, you get so excited about your salvation, now you have to unite with a body of Christ, a church. Right? And at World Victory Church and Life Center, becoming a member of this church, I believe, as sure as I'm standing here, is a wonderful thing. Anybody believe me? Yes, if you're looking for a place to have meaning in your life, if you're looking for a place to have significance in your life, if you're looking for a place where you can learn some strong principles from God about how to live your life, this is the place. And all you have to do to become a member is you don't have to walk down this aisle. You can find me or Reverend Burgess or anyone, any leader in this church, and we're going to have you fill out our membership covenant, give us some information, and you're going to be a member with inside five minutes or less, depending on how fast you write. Amen? That's all it takes. The rest of it are things we'll go through and things we'll learn. But our aim is to do what God told us to do. Grow his kingdom so that he can meet your needs. Amen? So if you're here today and you want to become a member of this church, all you have to do, those membership covenants are right there out the door. If you want to walk down the aisle, that's fine. But you don't have to. That's all you need to do. Amen? Amen. So it's that time of the year. For anyone who is involved in the educational system at all, raise your hand. And that should be everybody. Because whether, if you're a parent, even of grown children, you're always teaching. Amen? If you have a child in school and you're watching, you better pray for these teachers. Amen? I'm not sure that parents recognize or realize that most of their child's waking hours are spent under the direction of a teacher. Amen? So we're going to lift up our teachers today and everyone in the educational system. Let us pray. God, we thank you in this pivotal time of every year where children are going back to school. Your precious possession, ch uh, God, children, because children grow into adults. And we know, God, that you have a love for your children. In fact, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. When someone tried to keep them away from education, Jesus said, suffer them to come unto me. So God, we pray power for our teachers, our administrators, our teaching assistants, all the office staff of every school, God, that you would give them power from on high. And not just power, oh God, to do the job, but power, oh God, to recognize when someone is trying to get them off course. Give them power, God, to remember their mission, that they are pouring love into the lives of our young people. We can take all the books and they can change them and they can change history, but what they cannot change, God, is love. So we pray, God, again, for power for our teachers and all involved in education. Not just power, but we pray for love, like I mentioned. We also pray for a determined spirit that come hell or high water, they are going to teach our children. Now, God, I lift up the parents of those, teach, or of those children to give them to know you are their parent, but you cannot raise them alone. And that God needs to touch you as parents, that when you find a trusting teacher, you give them to that teacher, as it were, so that they can mold them and shape them, so that they can be what they need to be. There are many things that we can say, but what we know and what we believe 
is that every one of us here is the product of a teacher. And had it not been for those teachers, where would we be? So God, we lift you up and magnify you because you have the power to empower them. You have the power to strengthen them. You have the power to increase their love and their faith and their determination to teach your children. We love you. We magnify you. We lift up your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And they all said amen, 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 and amen. Amen. Give those people a hand. They are going into the battleground. But for their glory, they're going to take territory because they're the ones who are really fighting unseen enemies like never before. Amen. Those folks in that teaching ground, whoo, Lord Jesus. It's a battle every day. Battling administrators, battling everyone. Uh, Reverend Burgess, am I doing a benediction? Because I just kept on talking. Okay. Uh, they are battling everything because they, like everyone else, but even more so, they recognize that life is difficult. Life is difficult. Amen? That's why we leave with the same benediction every week in this world. You shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Go in peace. Have a lovely day. Remember, God loves you so very much, and so do we. Amen. Teach the children, babe. Teach those children. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.